Absolutely well deserved. Enjoy the moment. Thank you. Thank you for being part of our Waterbury Arts Magnet School class of 2021 graduation ceremony. What an outstanding class we are losing but you're still part of the Wham's family. Just remember that. At this time, I'd like to welcome Miss Viola Marie Flowers for our Pledge of Allegiance and our National Anthem. 
Paola. If everyone could please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would now like to invite the Whams Chorus and Chamber Choir to the stage to sing the Star Spangled Banner. Good morning. Thank you to the United States Army Color Guard for presenting our American flag this morning. Thank you to the WAMS Chorus. Thank you to the WAMS Chorus and Chamber Choir for their beautiful rendition of our Star Spangled Banner. Please help me in welcoming the Honorable Neil M. O'Leary, Mayor of the City of Waterbury.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to all of our parents, families, of course, our principal, Mr. Albini, Dr. Stasitis, Mr. Knoll, Ms. Dealey, all the incredible staff here at WAMS, Waterbury Arts Magnet School. Of course, to our school superintendent, Dr. Ruffin, and our school commissioners, and all of Dr. Ruffin's central office staff. And also, a huge welcome to the Waterbury Arts Magnet School's graduating class of 2021. I've learned over the last 10 years as mayor to keep my graduation remarks short, as I know all of you have uh, so much, so many great people to hear from. But I do want to uh, just talk about a couple of things very quickly. I also want to start out by remembering Waterbury Arts Magnet School, Jasmine Pena. Jasmine would have graduated this time last year had she not been overcome by the coronavirus and passed away. Uh, Jasmine, to my knowledge, was the only uh, Waterbury Public School student who succumbed to the coronavirus, but she and her family shall remain in our thoughts and prayers at all times. And what a year. What a year it's been, right? I mean, it's been an amazing experience, um, painful, uh, emotional, and very difficult for many of us, or all of us, but I also want to really thank all of you, teachers, staff, students, Dr. Ruffin, for your leadership during this pandemic that we finally are turning the corner on. I also want to uh, thank the sacrifice from the students and faculty at the Waterbury Arts Magnet School for giving up your stage so that we could turn it into a mass vaccination clinic. I know it was a difficult decision, uh, but I have to tell you the tens of thousands of people, particularly the elderly, are very grateful for that facility as it was recognized as one of the most productive in the state of Connecticut. To all of you graduates, I, you know, I pray to God for your health and safety. I pray that you are going to you find your dream, whether it's off to college, whether it's in the workforce. Please stay healthy, stay focused. The one message I would ask from all of you is that to the best of your ability, remember your families, particularly your parents, your grandparents, your siblings, as you move forward in life. And always remember, you're here, we hope, to make a difference. I have extraordinarily high hopes for all the graduating classes this year after all the things that they've seen and what they've learned, and not only throughout uh, Connecticut and the United States, but throughout the world. These are really challenging times. And believe me when I tell you, we need students and graduates like you to invest in all of our futures. You are our futures, by the way. And I pray to God that all of you take that challenge seriously and at some point make a difference in your community. Remember to always take care of the elderly and those less fortunate. God bless all of you and good luck class of 2021. Thank you, Mayor O'Leary. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Ruffin. Doctor? Thank you, Mr. No. And thank you, Mr. Albini and all of the staff and the students of Waterbury Arts Magnet High School. It is an honor being here with you today and very emotional for me, as I'm certain that it is for you and your families. It's been a long time 
since we have an opportunity to really meet in person and to see us all together. I was honored by participating and sharing with you during your honors recognition and so very pleased to see so many of you graduating with honors and scholarships and recognition and proving your leadership to be able to guide us as we move forward. To all of our parents and families who are here celebrating with you this evening or this afternoon or this morning rather, and to all of those that will be watching this live stream, uh, thank you for pouring into the lives of our young people who are graduating here today, class of 2021. You've learned so much in definitely a year when we know that all of the learning did not occur in a textbook. You've learned some very challenging lessons that will carry you through not only after you graduate, but will carry you for many years to come because you, unlike probably any other graduating class, have experienced what no one else has truly experienced. For over 15 months, you and your families and your staff have endured what we could never have imagined happening across the world. So I congratulate you on not only being a wonderful class of 2021, but for all the experiences and the knowledge and the wisdom that you will bring with you as you continue to be leaders of the world. Congratulations, class of 2021. Thank you, Dr. Ruffin. At this time, I'd like to invite our essayist, Marvin Fakri Nagib. Marvin. Thank you, Mr. Albini. Good morning. It is my pleasure to welcome the class of 2021 faculty and parents. The day I opened the letter from WAM saying I had been accepted into their sixth grade class was one that I will remember forever. Not because I was ecstatic to be attending this school, but because my mother was. I opened the letter and read the news to my family, watching my mom cry from joy. With such a dramatic reaction, you would think she would go absolutely insane seven years later when I got accepted into colleges. Surprisingly, she did not. She was obviously very happy, but she didn't cry. I often ask myself why my mom held such an underwhelming reaction to my college acceptances in comparison to my WAM's acceptance. Was she not proud of me? Did I just catch her on a bad day? To her, WAM's was the place I would grow into the person I am today. It would be the place where I'd make the friends that I would soon adapt my humor and mannerisms from, learn the most difficult lessons from, and understands what it tr understand what it truly means to work hard for what I want. To her, this send-off to a colorful art school in downtown Waterbury was one that would soon prepare me for the world I would enter upon graduation. To her, WAMS was more important than any other learning community I would join in the future. Now, as much as I would love to stand before you and go on and on about how great of a school WAMS was, although our freshman biology class was definitely a highlight, that's not what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about is not what occurred during our high school experience, but how we will take these occurrences and apply them to the rest of our lives. I want to take you all back to first period AP Language and Composition, one of the most challenging courses for many of us. In this class, when Ms. Park was absent, we'd have to write an in-class essay. The content of this essay would not be revealed until we sat down at our desks at approximately 7.20 in the morning. The only thing we knew coming in was that it had to be finished before the end of class. Was it going to be a rhetorical analysis, a synthesis essay, argumentative? We didn't know. Upon opening the door to the classroom and seeing a substitute teacher, one by one, students would groan in fear and impatiently tap their feet at their desks because the next steps were unknown. When the bell would ring, about 40 minutes after the prompts were passed out, whatever you had on the paper had to be handed in good or bad, two paragraphs or five, it was to be graded. The reason I share this story is because the fear of the unknown that we experienced whenever we would see a substitute teacher at Ms. Park's desk is what we soon learned to endure through. Were we prepared to write until our hands were sore? 
Were we prepared to formulate complex thoughts and articulate them first thing in the morning without prior notice? The answers to these questions are pretty obvious. The point is, plans change. If this year has taught us anything, it's that you must be malleable. You must accommodate things to your advantage. You must be prepared for the feelings of confusion, fear, and uncertainty. When our AP Lang class noticed our teacher was absent, our plans changed. When we were sent home in March of 2020, our plans changed. When we were told we had to spend our senior year in fear of a viral disease, our plans changed. And yet, here we are. Whether you are religious or not, the phrase, God gives his toughest battles to his strongest shoulders, should resonate with all of us. The losses experienced by the class of 2021 were ones that had detrimental effects on not only our learning experiences, but our mental health and overall personalities. We lost things that we have dreamt about since kindergarten. We have watched Disney Channel original movies longing to one day resemble their key scenes of adolescence. We have said, this is going to be our year since the ninth grade, hoping that one day we would reach these romanticized teenage dreams. The reality is that there will always be things we wish could have gone differently. This year is a prime example of that. But what separates failure from success is our willingness to persist and endure through unexpected tribulations. Each and every one of you here today have done exactly that. You all stand here just moments away from receiving your high school diploma because you persevered, you persisted, you worked through last minute changes and flawed virtual platforms, and now you're here. I think most of the teachers would agree with me when I say that we are one of the best classes WAMS has ever seen. Not because we wrote the best essays or got the highest grades, but because we achieved so much with so little. Although we have had a tough year with extenuating circumstances far beyond our control, these dreams are still in our hands. We have grown from the pandemic into better workers, students, and citizens in our communities. We have learned the, the value of being around our loved ones, being face to face with our teachers, and taking written assessments on our untraditionally shaped desks. So again, I stand before you today and say that although we are leaving the halls of WAMS about to thrive in a variety of different environments, we must not forget the foundational environment that allowed us to get here. I'm not going to say that I wish the best for the class of, cl class of 2021 because I already know that we will be the best. As Mark Twain once said, the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. To the class of 2021, go find out why. Leave the halls of whims unafraid to find who you are meant to be. Experiment, explore, and most importantly, have fun. We are going to change the world. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin. What a beautiful speech. I would now like to introduce our class salutatorium Nathan David Velasquez. Hello, everyone, and thank you all to the WAMS faculty, administrators, teachers, students, and family and friends for coming to the graduation of the class of 2021. I feel one of the most appropriate greetings for this occasion was put in words very well by Michelle Obama, our former First Lady. Hey queen, girl, you have done it again, constantly raising the bar for us all and doing it flawlessly. I'd say I'm surprised, but I know who you are. I've seen it up close and personal. Girl, you make me so proud and I love you. <laughs> now that introductions are out of the way, I want to say to my peers, it would be an understatement to say that I am proud of all of us for completing junior and senior year during a pandemic of all things. Passing AP, honors, college, and senior level academic classes, as no small feat when there was a virus right outside of our school doors infecting and killing over half a million people in this country alone. I implore you all to take a second, take a step back, and realize all you have gone through in the past several years at WAMS. Through it all, we were able to persevere, have hope for a better tomorrow, and accomplish what many cannot. 
even if it was getting out of bed, going to school, or logging on to class when you were having a bad or tiring day, I just want to say that I am proud of you. For some people, these things are automatic, self-explanatory, and simple routine. But for others, even something as small as that can be an obstacle in the day. Always remember to reflect and realize that working hard today, no matter the scale of the accomplishment, should be appreciated, and you should take pride in it. For if we not, cannot celebrate our accomplishments and milestones today, what will there be to look forward to tomorrow? At the present, our world may seem intimidating and even cruel. To make matters worse, our own fellow Americans are under serious attack. In 2021, there has been a rise in anti-Asian hate crime, anti-trans legislation in states, restrictive abortion bills which violate Supreme Court rulings, continued systemic oppression targeting people of color, voter suppression bills, and still a humanitarian crisis in Yemen and Palestine. The even more upsetting part of it is that I could have gone on to mention a rise in xenophobia, ableism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, fatphobia, Islamophobia, and more. This is a deeply disappointing reality, and even so, some interject that we've come so far, and in an extremely basic sense, yes, but our social culture is still struggling to combat the roots of oppressions of minorities. I do not say this to dampen the celebration of today or to the attitude of those looking into the, their future. I say this on a day of maturity and on a day of growth to bring awareness. If we are truly to look towards a, tomorrow as a light at the end of the tunnel, we must recognize the lingering darkness we still reside in. Attaining the light is not simple or easy. The hard work we've already put in must persist. It must to create a future of equity, joy, and harmony. This goal seems global, broad, and almost elusive, on the contrary, it is strictly individual. In order for our generation to truly say we've come so far, we must discover our uniquely made selves beyond the surface. There is so much depth to us as human beings, and the rejection who we are creates roots of hate. To illustrate, I'd like to share a deeply personal story of my own. When I was around seven or eight years old, I lived in a suburban split-level house in Wolcott. My mom and dad, Renee and Jose, had noticed areas of my head which were missing clumps of hair. We took pictures and shortly thereafter consulted a doctor. From then on, I was diagnosed with alopecia areata, which in simpler terms meant I was balding in elementary school. This is an autoimmune disorder which I was told was triggered by stress, and at an age which I could only count on two hands, I wasn't necessarily self-aware enough to pinpoint the source. In school, I don't recall ever being bullied for it, but certain microaggressions increased my self-consciousness. What happened to your hair? Did your barber mess up? And the real kicker, that's a hair that haircut is interesting. I found myself explaining perhaps more than I should have that it is a medical problem and no, it's not contagious. This I had to explain to a grown man who was incidentally my barber specializing in hair. I was confused too. I found it more simple to wear a hat, remain fashionable, and avoid the questions and concerns from my peers and others in public. I used this with my physician's approval in school to conceal my insecurities and avoid any and all comments on my appearance. To my surprise, this sparked more conversations. What's under your hat? Why do you never take it off? Could I just see it really quickly? What was under the hat became a concern for classmates and myself. I always knew it was there and covering it up did nothing. It would still be with me behind closed doors. It would still be with me hiding under the hat. The choice was now, do I want to be interrogated for what I'm hiding or who I am? It was a senseless to stand out as an image of myself which was not authentic. Pestering comments and self-consciousness was lo no longer going to get in the way of being myself unapologetically, which meant it had to go. Taking off my hat was terrifying. For years, it was what I wore everywhere, so it was strange to get used to. In the long run, it was liberating. It felt really good, making that my promise to myself to undo the veil of disguise, which distracted others from my raw characteristics, set off what blossomed into the self-confident, bold, intelligent, loving, and respecting high school graduate, Yukon bound on a full scholarship hopeful person which I've grown to become. Now, to everyone in Municipal Stadium today, take off your hats. Not literally, we're not, we're not done with the ceremony yet. Reflect on who you are and ensure to yourself that you're presenting your true self. There is nothing to be ashamed of. Those who will tear you down, make you wary of showing your true colors aren't always being themselves. The internal misery which those people are going through to insult your authentic self should not affect your expression, your identity, your outward character. The greatest analogy I've come across to trying to express this message was said so eloquently by Bishop Yvette Flunder, a, a pastor at City of Refu 
Refuge, UCC in San Francisco, in reference to closeted LGBTQIA plus individuals. Closets, especially church closets, are unfit for human growth and habitation. Closets are musty, they have no windows, they are dark, they are created for storage, they are not for living people. In one way or another, we have had our own closet, whether it is to shut out our sexuality from those around us, our gender identity, our psychological disorders, our religion, our nationality, our beliefs, our place in society, or our true self. These are all natural. It would be ridiculous to be ashamed to be yourself. This is in no way pressuring anyone to come out or declare yourself as belonging to any other role at this moment. If you are not ready to identify yourself publicly or make your identity set in stone, that is also okay. You owe nothing to anyone. As long as you know who you are, that is what matters. Let anything else happen at your own comfort. Preserve your own happiness, but know you are loved and respected unconditionally. Unless you, like, rob a bank or something. To close, in all seriousness, I and all of our staff, students, family, and friends, know that this class is truly phenomenal. It isn't every day you see a class as intelligent, accepting, responsible, funny, talented, and loving. I can't claim to personally know all of you, but just going to the same school, being together, and having similar experiences helps me understand the surface level of everyone's greatness. Throughout this year, I've grown to know you all better and still have memories from middle school to understand some of your core characteristics. Everyone here has seen from the award ceremony, art and dance shows, musicals, and from our teachers' own accounts that we are such a memorable and accomplished class. I know there's so much more depth and dimensions to every single one of you, and I will tell you all personally and individually in the wise words of Wendy Williams. You've got a point. You are an icon, you are a legend, and you are the moment. Thank you all so much. I know wherever you all end up, you will do great things because you are all such beautiful human beings, and from the bottom of my heart, I will truly miss you all. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. At this time, I would like to introduce and call upon our valedictorian and class president, Viola Flowers. Yeah. Welcome esteemed guests, administrators, teachers, families, and students of the class of 2021. I'd like to take a moment to thank the administrators for giving us this graduation, the teachers that are with us today, the families joining us today in our support. I would also like to personally thank my family and friends for their guidance and support of me and my endeavors. To the class of 2021, where should I even begin? We are unique to say the least. For many of us, we're the class that spent most of our senior year in our pajamas. We rolled barely out of bed and we clicked the same three buttons for the same 180 days. Mute, camera off, join now. <laughs> we all definitely caught up on some sleep this year, especially when the class agenda was to work independently. Yeah, right? <laughs> as paradoxical as it may be, we are the class that had a reunion before we even graduated. I think it goes without saying that the circumstances we faced this year were unimaginable by any means. I am immensely proud of each of you persevering during these unprecedented times and working to still earn your seat on this field here today. Each of us chose to continue with our education to ensure that we would make it to this milestone, despite all the difficulties we faced and all the personal struggles we overcame. When I originally began writing this speech, I thought I wanted to call out the shortcomings our class had to face this past year both at the hands of the pandemic and our school district. I wanted to acknowledge and emphasize the efforts our student leaders made to change our situation and provide more for our seniors this year. But I don't want my time here today to be spent talking about the pandemic that marked this year. Instead, I want to talk about how amazing our graduating class is. We have always been praised by teachers and staff as being one of the best classes to walk through the doors of WAMS. We've been complimented since we were in middle school for our respect and intelligence, and I think that speaks tremendously to the character of this class. Many of us here today have seen each other a handful of times this past year, if at all. Yet on beach days or senior celebration events, we find ourselves talking as if not a day went by. There are some people I haven't seen much since middle school, yet talking to them, it feels as if we saw each other in a math class just yesterday. That says a lot about the camaraderie of this class of 2021. 
Despite being a past the past 14 months, we still managed to come together, especially in these past 14 days. However, the people sitting to your left and right will not be by your side forever. Some of us will be fortunate enough to have made lifelong friends out of some of our peers, but for many of us, this will be our parting goodbye. That does not mean, though, that we have not made a tremendous impact on each other's lives. Although these friendships may have been temporary, they are the ones that shaped us into the young adults we are today. I want you to think back to a time, any time, throughout your educational career at WAMS that became a moment you would never forget. Whether it was winning Homecoming King, performing on the palace stage, or even something as a simple memory with your favorite teacher at lunch. The people that surrounded you in that time, the place that made that memory possible, it all had an impact on you. The fact that you can sit here before me today and recall that memory shows the impact that WAMS had on you. Now for the staff and the families in the audience, I would like you as well to think back to a high school memory you can remember to this day. That memory is the testimony to the impact your adolescent education had on you. Although these memories have long passed, you can see, hear, and feel that moment decades after its transience has expired. I hope that our class can share these same moments to carry with us through the years to come. Now, class of 2021, as you're about to embark on your adult life, I ask that you keep one guiding question in mind. Are you happy? This is a question my mom has always asked me since I was young, a question I have posted on my bulletin board at home and one that I am constantly asking myself. Do the immense amount of stress and pressure I put on myself for the past four years make me happy? Did it make me happy to finally see my work pay off with my name engraved on a gold medal? Did the friendships and relationships I built the past few years truly make me happy? It's such a simple question, yet its meaning holds the weight of your world. What if I asked all of you here before me today, are you happy? Would your answer be yes? I hope that it would, considering that we are all here today celebrating a culmination of hard work and achievement and friendships of an amazing group of students. But what if it wasn't? What if your answer was, no, I'm not happy? What happens then? To my class and to the guests here before me, I ask that you live your lives in such a way that you never have to face that answer of no. This is your one chance at living a life, so I urge you to do it happily. Please do not waste years wallowing in despair or sadness when you could have been soaking in so much more life around you. Do not settle for complacency when a life of fulfillment lies right around the corner if you only choose the road leading to it. And I know this is all easier said than done, believe me. It is so much easier to retrospectively reflect on your life and pinpoint exactly where you could have pursued happiness and where you chose not to. But make every effort that you can along the way to keep answering yes to the simply loaded question. Keep asking yourself, am I happy? If your answer isn't yes, please chase it, change it. Live your life as an endless pursuit of happiness, remembering to choose joy and to fight for all that it is worth. I'd like to take a moment back to the high school memory I asked you all to recall earlier. Before I close here today, I'd like to share mine with you. It was the day before my first ever AP exam my freshman year, and Mr. Butler was giving us a speech, and it went a little something like this. It was the last basketball game of Mr. Butler's high school career, and his coach called the team into the locker room for a pep talk. They were expecting, as my AP World History class was, and probably as all of you are here today, a great speech that would inspire them and be something they would remember forever. His coach simply looked at them and said, breathe. Mr. Butler said it was at that moment he realized it was the worst pep talk he had ever received. And it was also at that moment I realized this might be the worst pep talk I'll ever receive. But what he shared with us after this had one of the greatest impacts on me. Mr. Butler looked at all of us and said, I realize that it's not about the final game. It never was about the game and it never will be about the game. It's about how you prepare leading up to the game and where you go when the game is over. Class of 2021, right here, right now, we're playing the final game of our high school career, which means it was never about getting dressed up in the cap and gown. It was about getting dressed up in a black and white polo every morning to face a new day. It was never about walking across the stage to get a diploma. It was about walking the hallways with our friends, learning from each other and finding out who we are. It was never about finally getting to leave high school. It was about the new chapters of our lives that will start once we're gone. 
Class of 2021, I ask that you begin this next chapter with a fearless pursuit of happiness and with the memories of a place that you made that made you the person you are today. Leave not with a, a diploma in your hand, but with the vast, endless opportunities that await your next chapter. Here's to the start of the rest of our lives. Thank you. So sorry about that. I would now like to call our principal, Mr. Nicholas Albini, <laughs> to the stage. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Viola, for the afterthought. <laughs> so first of all, good morning and welcome. I'd like to uh, thank Honorable um, Mayor Neil O'Leary, Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Ruffin, Assistant Superintendent of Schools in the audience, Dr. Epperson, um, Miguel Pibon, Director of Pupil Services, uh, Mrs. Nairi Toussaint, Director of College and Career Readiness. Certainly our four Board of Education Commissioners, Ms. Elizabeth Brown, Juanita Hernandez, Amanda Nardozzi, and Melissa Serrano Adorno. Thank you for coming today. As well as my family at WAMS, Dr. Stasitis, Mr. Knoll, and Ms. Dealey. My favorite, yeah. <laughs> Parents, guardians, friends, staff, and especially to our soon-to-be Waterbury Arts Magnet School graduates, I cannot tell you how so very thrilled I am that we are here in each other's company in person today for your graduation ceremony. This is a special moment and one that I hope you can leverage for a bright and prosperous future. While life might present its fair share of challenges, please do not let those challenges defeat you. Learn from them, overcome them, and become stronger because of them. I know you want to become Waterbury Arts Magnet School graduates, so I will not take much more of your time. But please remember, be humble, be courteous, be a professional, be helpful, and always be you. While you may not conquer the world, go out and own it and enjoy it. I love you from the bottom of my heart, graduates. Please do not hesitate to ever ask anyone in WAMS family for help and support. We look forward to it. Live long, live healthy, live well. God bless to you all. my afterthought. <laughs> I'd like to welcome the WAMS Chorus and Chamber Choir, directed by Ms. Vagnini. Come up to please sing You Will Be Found from the musical Dear Evan Hansen.
Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? That you would fall and no one would hear? So let that lonely feeling wash away Cause maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay Cause when you don't feel strong enough to stand You can reach, reach out your hand And our student body feeling isolated, separated from a world they once knew. The class of 2020 also having to face similar challenges. But together we realized that although we may not always see it, none of us are alone. And together, our voices are stronger than ever.
we're getting there. Now's the time. I'd like to welcome Dr. Stasitis to come up for the naming of the graduates. Dr. Stasitis. Okay, family, staff, whams, the time we've been waiting for, the awarding of diplomas. It is my honor and pleasure to begin with the top 10 academic ranked students for the graduating class of 2021. I will begin with our valedictorian and class president, Viola Marie Flowers. Our class salutatorium, Nathan David Velasquez. Our class essayist, Marvin Fekri Nagib. Sangeeta Devi Kazanath. Lillian V. Caparuccio. Eric Riley Canfield. Angelica Nicole Pelias. Mateo D. Macias. Samantha Ann Gilbert. Destiny Paris. Let's hear it for our top 10. Okay. Brianna Alexandra Acosta. Eric William Bears Jr. Tyrese T. Bradley. Ian Orion Shiloh Bruner. <laughs> Bianca Rochelle Burton. Kayla Cabrera. Jess Canada. Alexia Marie Cartagena. Madison Monroe Casey. Orlando A. Ceballo. Oh, yeah. Way to go, Orlando. <laughs> David James Saracel. <laughs> Sophia Marie Dadamo. Gregory De La Cruz. Rodney A. Delgado. Nicholas Paul DePaulo. Madison Emily Drewswicki. Amanda Edward. Job. 
Madison Rose Estes. Catherine Finer, Angeliana Fernandez, Tsunami A. Figueroa, Roberto A. Fontanez the Third. Patrick R. M. Frenet. <laughs> Nyla C. Frierson. <laughs> Neve Elise Ganuccio. Miguel Garcia, <laughs> Jeremiah Caleb Gonzalez, Sydney Lauren Anastasia Gordon. Samantha Elise Granada. Ian Edward Griffin. Ashley Brianna Harris. Talon A. Hernandez. Naya Carol Tat Hunt. Morgan Elizabeth Genasio. Myelena Janelle Jimenez. Denasia M. Kennedy. Carrie Ann A. Lamy. Danielle Amina Lewis. Sophia R. Lopez. Drew S. Lucian. I would like to invite Mr. Knoll to come up to finish naming the graduates. Thank you, Dr. Societas. It is my pleasure to continue with the awarding of the diplomas and we are going to continue with Christopher Misano. Devin Joseph Mallon. Laguerre J. Martinez. Sharik T. Mason. Brianna Abigail McCalla. Rory Ann, Rory Ann Marie McCarthy. Rashad Celine Alexander Millwood.
Angel Miranda. Juan J. Molina. Congratulations, Juan. James Michael P. Montanola. Montanola. Congratulations, buddy. Bianca Paulette Moreno. Charisma Rose Newmark. Congratulations, Charisma. Madison Nicole Nichols. Andrew James Nazardo. Selene Onur. John Paul Parenti. Jeremiah Dequan Parker. Madison Denise Penta. Angeli Lynn Perez. Jaden Omari Perkins. Jordan Lynn Potosa. Paul Angel Plaza. Brandon William Price. Jacqueline M. Quintana. Bathsheba Gracinda Rasco. Alana Marie Rivera. Alexander Benjamin Rivera. Carlos Gabriel Rivera. Marissa Nicole Rivera. Solomon Owen Goldwire Roberts. Kathleen Aaron Robinson. Emma Louise Rocchio. Anneli Karen Ruiz. Kylie Shea Russell. Adrian K. San Vincent. Christopher Thomas Sanford. Iteris Ibn Sitar. Ariel Bonnie Shidnenden. Albert Michael Silva. Yeah. 
All right. Evan Sharon Smith. Mr. Albini, the EMTs are out uh, to the left on your way out. You might want to check that out. All right, we're to, tough to follow that up. Let's continue with Jane Elise Nicole Soto. Maya Soto. David Rose Strider. Daniel Allen Surreal. Veronica Celia Tardif. Vanessa Tebow. Ashley N. Thomas. and Aaliyah Elizabeth Willits. All right, congratulations and welcome to all. This time I'm going to turn things back over to our building principal, Mr. Nicholas Albini. Okay, that was fun. <laughs> Can we run through that again? No. All right. Listen, I got to tell you, I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you ter terribly. What a wonderful group of students, a wonderful group of young adults. We are so fortunate to have met you and so unfortunate that we're going to lose you. But we love you. Trust me. So, at this time in the typical WAMS tradition, when we have a retiring teacher, we like to have that teacher come up and certainly lead our students out. Mr. Quato Chucky, Mr. Q as they say. <laughs> Mr. Q, would you please, when we are ready to escort the students out, would you lead the students out for us? Great pleasure and honor. So with a name like Quattro Chucky, we call him Mr. Q. <laughs> Mr. Q. At this time, I would like to invite Miss Viola Marie Flowers up for the turning of the tassels. All righty, guys. Class of 2021, please stand. Okay. <laughs> okay. Soon to be graduates. Please take your tassels and turn them from right to the left of your cap. Congratulations to the new graduates of the Waterbury Mass School Class 2021!
Mr. Q. I'll give you a couple of minutes to find your cap so we can be let out by Mr. Q. You are now officially graduates of Waterbury Arts Magnet School 2021. Congratulations, parents, guardians, aunts, uncles, grandmothers, grandfathers, siblings who helped make this possible for our class of 2021. We thank you. Mr. Q. They're coming. 